So the first time I actually remember riding, I was probably about four years old. Um, and it was actually one of the tracks that we had in our actual property, our backyard. Um, I think I had a little KTM 50 at the time. You know, when I was at such a young age, about four years old, you know, riding at our track at home and then also riding at local tracks. Um, you know, kind of at that point, you know, obviously you're so young, but you know, you're having fun and you're, you're doing your thing and you never really know where life's gonna take you at that point. This is the first thing I remember, which is funny. We had a couple PW50s. There's an extra one in the van. And Wesson would always go in the van when he's three years old and start it up and hold the thing wide open. And it was on a kickstand. And if the thing would have ever popped off the kickstand, he would have probably went through the front of the van. You know, obviously as a kid, you're always excited. You're like, oh, I got a dirt bike. I want to race, I want to race, I want to race. But, you know, obviously there's, you know, more to life than just that. There's, there's school, there's, there's friends, there's fun, there's life, and there's other journeys out there. So at that point, I really never had any thoughts of, of racing professional. We had the property in Menifee, uh, he started riding in, and the biggest problem he had is he just wanted to hold the bike wide open, and he crashed a lot, he went to the fence at the Menifee house. Growing up, I went to, you know, I went to regular grade school from first to fifth, and then, you know, sixth to eighth, and then as well as I went to one year high school, but my background was always, always a bad kid. I used to refer to him as a devil child when he was younger. He used to break everything and destroy everything in the house climb up on the bed, stack stuff up on the table, break all the ceiling fan blades off. Um, he'd look at you and laugh and break stuff. The kid was uh, pretty much out of control. In the beginning, obviously, he wasn't to have a job, so I financed everything. I was buying the bikes. We had, I bought a motor home. We were traveling everywhere. I drove, I was a mechanic. I was everything. I mean, we, I did everything. Me and him were together a lot. We used to go, I think we went to Texas between Oak Hill and I can't even remember the other track that there used to be out there, but we were gone for like 18, 20 days. Racing as an amateur and my dad supporting me, um, the kind of the breaking point where we both knew that I possibly had potential in, in racing Supercross and racing nationals as a professional level was uh, 2008, Loretta's, I won you know, my first intermediate championship there. My dad was like, okay, I see some potential. So then we're like, well, let's move into the pro class. And you know, at that point, it was, a, it was a very weird time for us because I had a support deal through Yamaha at the time, but then Times were getting tough in the industry, so then in 2009 there really wasn't much support at the time. So my dad was like, "Well, screw it. Let's just go. Let's go buy two Hondas and let's go race the nationals." You know, racing as a as a um, an amateur was that I that I was beating and competing with. They all had factory green rides. They had Honda deals. They had Yamaha deals, and they all were carried from an amateur to a lights team right off the bat. So that's all I was ever focused on. Was like. Oh, I want a championship. I should for sure be getting an amateur deal. I should, or I should for sure be getting a, a pro deal. I should be on Star, Geico, uh, PC, something like that. And um, it never worked out for me that way. So it was like um, from right off the bat, it was a struggle. And there was an agent there at the time that was working with Wonder Warthog. And the lady I was talking to, she's like, she's like, oh, what are your expectations today? And then um, I was like, well, I'm not top ten. It was my first national. I know this place. I've, I've grown up here, I've, I've lived here my whole life, I've always ridden this track, and she's like, <clears throat> I never forget this, she's like, if you top 10, I'll get you a ride on Moto Concepts the next weekend. And I, and I was just like, in my head, I was just laughing like that, no way, you're, you're a liar. And um, so actually, I, I top 10 I got ninth place overall, and, the, uh, and it actually came true the next weekend. I was riding for Moto Concepts at that point. Um, I finished outdoors. Um, and I was kind of in a sense not promised, but I was kind of told that I would still have a ride on that team for the next year Because that at that point they went on to getting a deal with um, Yamaha as a support team, but um, you know tables turned and I didn't get on the team I was, I was pretty bitter about it um, for a little while because then I had to switch my whole program over again to being full privateer again, which I didn't want to do um, you know, so from then on from literally from 2010, 11, 12, 13, halfway through 14, I was a privateer and it was, it was, it was crazy, you know, just having to go through the motions of back to square one, buying your own bikes, um, as well as I had sponsors come on, I had friends come on and help me buy bikes, so I was just doing everything back on my own and trying to fund this program on my own, which was, it's, it's not easy, it, it's, it's one of the hardest things in the world to to have the speed I did and have the potential, but then show up every weekend on a privateer bike competing with with the top pros in the world and I'm beating half of them and I'm just like, you know, I'm sitting here every weekend like, what is going on? Like, why aren't I getting a break? 
Like, why aren't these teams looking at me? Why aren't these teams hiring me? Like, what is the problem here? Like, what am I doing wrong? And I would talk to them and, and it was always, um, oh, we'll consider you. Oh, we'll consider you. Once I hit 2014, I kind of knew like this was my make or break year. I'm either, I'm either making it and getting onto a factory ride or after this year we're done. And uh, <clears throat> it was a tough decision that we had to make, but I would say halfway through Supercross, you know, I was getting, you know, top fives, fourth places, like I was really hitting my marks, you know, and, and I had obviously was, had more support. And then about, I couldn't remember which uh, Supercross it was, I was sitting there and uh, I ended up getting hired onto RCH. And after RCH, we started talking to uh, JGR. Actually, I've been talking to JGR for a few years, few years before that. I believe Unadilla. Um, I think I actually had signed my, my contract with JGR at that time and I was I was blown away. I was like, is this is this happening? Like I just went from from sucking privateer for, for five, six years straight to having my own team, then graduating to RCH for outdoors and then almost through outdoors I signed my next factory deal with JGR and that was uh, you know, that was a time in my life where I was like, you know, stoked. I was like, I finally, I made it. And then I was putting myself in a position where I was getting, you know, good starts and, and running up front. And, you know, we went into Santa Clarita that, uh, I think it was Santa Clara that weekend. Um, I was feeling strong, I was comfortable, the bike was great. And everything was clicking. And, you know, that night was, you know, the night where I was just like blown away at, uh, at what I had done. And, and I ended up getting my first podium that weekend. And, and it, was, uh, it was shocking. I was like, wow, where I've came from, you know, what I've done and, and the way I came up to be able to finally, you know, get a podium was, was insane. Because that was the things I was dreaming about from when I turned pro in 2009. I was like, back at that point, I never even thought that I'd ever get on the podium. You know, obviously I've had some crazy run-ins with, um, with Vince and, uh, you know, it all started racing with him as an amateur and then racing pro. I raced on the same team with him and then, um, you know, had it out with him where the first time I got crazy with him was, you know, he cleaned me out in practice and I started hitting him up in Washougal for the first time in the national and then, uh, and then, you know, cut screw from that to like three years later, it's still going on. It's a still current battle and it's, it's never disappearing. And, uh, that was uh, 2016 Anaheim. All of a sudden here it comes again. I leave the door open an inch and he comes in and just cracks me again. And then I just kind of just went from there. I just blacked out. You know, that was another crazy turning point of like, you know, boosting, you know, fan base, boosting followers and just, um, you know, as well as just it opened the eyes of like, damn, someone's actually gonna hit someone after, you know, there's a confrontation and everybody else is always just talk, 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 this, this, that, and they never do anything. And then, you know, here you have me, someone that just doesn't care, I'll hit you. You know, you push me to the brinks, I'm gonna hit you. And, uh, you know, that's kind of how it went. It was, you know, just crazy times. And, uh, you know, it's just, you finally gonna get served. 2019, uh, you know, I changed some things in my program, you know, hired a new trainer, um, I was feeling extremely well, healthy, you know, on and up and up. And uh, going into that off season, uh, I was I had scheduled races. I was supposed to be going to to Japan to do a race, and that got let on. It got canceled. And then I was out road biking at the time, actually, and I got a phone call from Eric Pernard, and he's like, "Hey, what are you doing? Um, we had a cancellation." And, and one of the riders, he's like, "Do you want to come to France?" And I'm like. Um, when? He goes, you gotta fly on a plane tomorrow. And I was like, well, damn, I don't have any time. I was like, I don't know what I gotta do. I don't have any time. We don't have bikes. We didn't ship bikes. You know, you start thinking of suspension parts, this and that. So, um, just a lot of things turning. And then, you know, so then go from there. I said yes. And then we, uh, we get a quick plan together. It was me, Travis, um, uh, Justin Hill had went and I can remember, uh, who else had won at that time, but it was such a last minute little pack. And we ended up dipping out, going next day flight, flew out early in the morning. Um, you know, obviously do that, show up last minute, start racing, you know, finish one race. I think I finished uh, second or third, go into race two. And then, uh, you know, all of a sudden just, uh,
The day in France was kind of a weird day. I was riding mountain bikes that day and I crashed really bad and broke my collarbone, concussion, tore up my arm and fingers, and I had a big hematoma on my right side hip. Anyways, I'm at home and I'm watching the, the live timing feed and, and they go into the, to the first corner and all of a sudden, you know, it shows Weston get hit and get on the ground, but then they don't show, live timing never shows him back again. And all of a sudden they finally show a picture and his bike's over on the side. And I'm like, what the hell is this like a, a simple little fall over? So I didn't understand what's going on. And then you can kind of see how he's on the side of the track and he was like, laying there almost like dead and I'm like freaking out like what the heck so it's like dude I need to talk to somebody and then Panora is all he did is he got on the phone and said you need to come out here and I'm like well what's going on he goes you just need to come out here he goes I, I can't I don't want to get into one so it's like okay so at that time Kelly and myself we had to try to find a flight the only flight we could find was the next day in the morning so we got on the flight right away in the morning and like I said I was pretty banged up but it you know pretty sore but it didn't matter had to get out there for my kid and you know we flew out there and then from there <sighs> you wake up in the hospital and uh you know you're just like sitting there like whoa what what really happened you know and uh just you're you're still you know you're you're dazed you're blurry you're not you're not thinking straight <clears throat> you can't talk see him laying there and as all we're told is he he could be brain dead and paralyzed and we're just like you know then you slowly start processing it and then it starts coming back and you're like oh crap i'm in the hospital um you know badly injured can't talk you know legs jacked up faces crushed in can't see out of one eye and you know there's just so much um you know so many emotions that are going on and just so much crazy stuff and and, you know, that's kind of, you know, the, the logistics of what I remember the most of it other than, you know, just dealing with doctors, nurses, and, and things that you could never imagine, you know, dealing with in another country, you know, with language barriers and, and you know, not being able to speak at all and having to write on, a, you know, pen and paper, you know, just trying to write down just so you can communicate with, you know, family and nurses, you know, how you're feeling, what's going on, this and that. And it was all just like crazy to think three days before that I was in California training for 2019 season. And, uh, and that's just kind of, you know, the crazy, the gist of, of what had happened to my career ending accident. You know, then all of a sudden it's back home, Supercross is starting. I'm, I'm traveling to the races, you know, I'm still trying to be attached to it as much as I can. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm still around. I'm, I almost went to, I would say more than half the Supercross races, just trying to be there and stay motivated, stay positive and, and, you know, let the fans know, you know, I'm here, I'm, I'm attending, you know, I'm, I'm trying my best. I'm, I'm seeing doctors, I'm, I'm researching everything I possibly can to see what I can do to, you know, improve the vision that I, that I have lost. And, and, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, dead ends and, and it was one of those things where, you know, you just keep fighting, you keep fighting, you, you keep searching, searching, searching. And, you know, it was at that point where this year I was, you know, kind of having that turning point of like, I don't think it's going to get any better um, with my eye. And, uh, and it just took that point where I was like, you know, it's, I can only do all I can do. And, and at this point, I think it's, you know, I got to move on with my life and, and switch my roles to do something else. And, and at the same time, I'm still riding, I'm, I'm shooting commercials, ads for Fly, WPS, and, and numerous brands under them. And uh, I will be retiring and uh, I'll be done racing professional motorcycles. And I'm gonna end up starting a new chapter in my life.